I am trying to launch in UA Path Studio, which is being uh, launched here. So before that, like uh, we all memorize like what happens in you know, a previous session. So I, have, I hope uh, you might have seen UA Path Studio where a lot of uh, I uh, uh, I mean to say that a lot of uh, windows were there. So one is a properties window. So properties window. This is a properties window. So which is used to which is have some information about activities. Okay, this is let's say example input activity which contain information about uh, it's slow. Yeah, here if you could see here which contain different types of information about the activities. So anyway, we'll we'll discuss in detail today. So before moving to that, uh, um, so basically, when you're trying to install your uh, machine, right? So, so these are all the set of requirements are required. So basically, you have says uh, hardware requirements. CPU we require 1.4 gigahertz and 32 bit. The minimum requirement. And uh, which is recommended as dual core 1.8 gigahertz, just 64 bit even. And RAM basically, if you require, so the recommended is the 4 GB is enough. So these are the hardware requirements enough to install your UA Pass 2D in your local machines. And coming to the software requirements. So, so these are the operating system which is going to be support Windows 7, 10, and um, Windows Server 2008 R2 and uh, 2012 R2 and of course 2016. So when we talk about a .NET framework, so why we need a .NET framework? So this is a mandatory. So because they were developed the user for UA Path uh, Studio by using a uh, .NET framework. So minimum requirement. So we need a version of 4.5.2. The .NET. The recommendation is uh, 4.6.1. So these are all these software requirement which is used which is going to be installed UA Pass Studio in your local machines. Okay. So let's move on to the so important topic uh, variables and data types. So this is a basic stuff, right? So when we go for any language, C or C++ or Java or .NET, COBOL, so whatever the language. So if we want to kickstart so this is the kicks this is the entry point so make sure that if i am if your, your work has been assigned to you so make sure that you have to think like so what are the variables are required and what are the data types are required to process my data so before going to discuss about that so can you please anyone tell me what is a variable guys you try where to you can store data. so where you can store data. excellent any other like representing some data so representing some data so make sure that right so we like that is sorry say it again sorry exactly storing is representing yeah right so we need to store right so because we are working for a business right when working for a business so make sure that we are going to play with the data the different types of data right let's say example you are playing with employee you are playing with the employee management system so what happens where if you want to if you want to write some program on that so my first and foremost step is so declaring variables right so if you want to try to declaring variables so how many variables are required so basically when you talk about employee management system the basic variables are required employee number employee name and salary and coming to like uh, <clears throat> designation so when you talk about em as employee number so employee number where we can store only integer, I mean to say that num numeric type of information. Am I right? So coming to employee name where I can store, so like you no, know, some character to alpha, alpha numeric sometimes, so alpha alphabetics only we can store over there. And coming to the salary, so where I can see like a precision value, like 4,000.25 rupees, 25 paise, something we can see there. Of course, designation where we are going to store only the character information. So if you want to store if you want to play with this type of information I know basically every language has designed its own variable I mean own data types Okay, so <clears throat> when we talk about 
variables, right? So variables are used to store multiple types of data. So I, I told you, right? It's like, you no, know, it's an integer, or it may be a, <coughs> it may be a string, or it may be a double. So, so based on this, I can I can create the variable, and based on the variable, based on the requirement, I can assign the data type as well. So data stored within a variable is called value. So normally, the first step is we are declaring a variable, right? So normally, if in C or C++ or Java or .NET, the basic stuff is int a. So a is nothing but the variable name of type integer. So so a equals to 10. If it done a equals to 10, so what will say I am assigning the value into the variable is nothing but the value of the variable. Okay, UiPath supports different types of data types. So we have a generic, we have a string, we have an integer, we have a data table, we have a date and time, and so on. So we have a data table, so data row, whatever we have it in C or C++ or Java, we are storing, we are having all type of data types in our UiPath Studio. So, <clears throat> I hope you are uh, very well known about uh, this variable stuff, right? Anyone new new to the cloud? What is a variable and what was what data type? So that I'll discuss in detail if you need. Guys, I know. guys, I need response from you. Like it's a yes or no? Yeah, you can continue. No issue. We you know. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you. So basically, all our you know, .NET developers, you might don't know like, uh, so what is the variable, what is the data type, and all. So, so I'm just a bit wrapping here. So naming best practices. Okay, when we talk about uh, naming. Uh, when we declare a variable, so make sure that we have to follow these are best practices provided by the UA path. Um, so variable type. So whenever declaring is generic, so generic. So we'll discuss in detail all these things. Okay. So variable when I declare a generic variable, I am going to use gen variable name. If I'm declaring text type of variable, text is nothing but is a string where I can store alphanumeric values. So which is prefixed by str variable name if it is a number variable type So make sure that it is prefixed with integer int it's a variable name if it is a true or false Of course, we have a we might don't know like a well-known uh, variable type called boolean So if it is a bool type so make sure that you just declare bool a prefix with the bool after that give the variable name of course So Tim is a variable name so data table, so DAT. So if, if you are very familiar about the data table, so we are going to use, we are, a lot of places we are going to use the data table um, variable in UiPath for playing with multiple types of information, multiple you know, rows and columns of data. So which is a prefix with the DAT, it's a variable type. Instead of normally we are using right DT also we are using, so better we can use the DAT or DT variable name. These are the naming. Uh, uh, no, my naming conventions when we are declaring variables so make sure that you just follow like this so predominantly when we talk about so variable panel so I'll show you variable panels how it is looking like yes <clears throat> so this is my variable panel Okay, so better view now. Okay, so this is my uh, variable panel. If I'm not selecting my workspace, so this is a workflow designer, right? As I explained about this workflow designer, so where I can design my workflow. If I'm not selecting workflow designer, so by default here, I cannot create, I cannot create any variable at all. If you want to create, so make sure that you have to click, you have to select some sequence or any activity so that 
this is going to be enabled for us okay <clears throat> i'm just going to create a new sequence for creating a new sequence this is a how this is how we have to create so click on new sequence or else and let us create one more project for variables start so i'm just clicking blank project here i have given variable variable demo so this is a description of our project this is optional if you're trying to give you can give or else leave it as default one okay so when i click on create so it is going to create the project like this which is has main.xml by default main.xaml file is going to be create when you know, create a view path to the project so if you want to create one more file on top of it i'm just creating a sequence i'm just declaring uh, like a uh, generic demo so i just click on so when you create a sequence by default one sequence is going to be create in the workflow designer so i'm just going to talk about this variable panel so by default it is not going to display because i didn't select any activity in the workflow design when i click on those automatically this is going to be enabled so here the basically there are four columns available in the in the variable ribbon the first one is name so this is a mandatory field when i'm creating a variable so make sure that we have to give the variable name or else this by def or else if we're not giving any variable by default it is going to create default one call variable one so make sure that i'm just going to give a variable like a str name so this is a variable type very very important so by default i can see boolean integer string object array of type and browse type if if i'm if i'm fetching for like a double data type but i'm not able to see here then go to browse for types here we, here we can select double we can type double i'm getting some noise i'm just mute all okay okay i'm just coming to the point so here system dot double if you select it automatically it is going to be attached in the variable type column here i can see like uh, system dot double is going to be available so this is also mandatory so i'm declaring a variable this is how we have to create the variable and i'm just i have to choose what type of data it is let's take example my variable type is integer sorry string I'm just selecting string scope scope is very very important so i'm just trying to push i'm trying to pull one more sequence which is available in the activity panel so type it sequence so i'm just drag and drop on a generic okay so this is my inner sequence so always give names to the activities so which is used to track your workflow inner sequence okay and uh, so i'm selecting this sequence and I'm creating one more variable str inner so it is also type of so here I'm selecting scope as a sqq inner sequence now I'm going back to the my <clears throat> if you selected outer sequence right I am not able to see that str inner since 
which is bound to this sequence. So this is called scope of the variable. My if you declare one variable that that is where that variable is going to be entire my workflow, then declare is a, declare it as a outer sequence. The scope should be a see this is my name of the sequence. Generic demo is the name of the sequence. So here I am selecting. So if you want to make this also should be visible to all, then and try to change the scope of the variable um, scope of the variable to Zendrick demo then wherever you click here I can able to see two variables What happened it is not changed. Yes so try to change this And uh, See here you also I'm saying I'm seeing two variables here also. I'm two, seeing two variables. So this is how scope is going to be work Okay so this is the default one. So normally we are declaring a variable and also along with that I am I am assigning some value to default values. Okay, let's say example if we're declaring a pi. So default value the pi is 3.142. So like this, if you have any default values or if you want to declare any uh, flag values or if you want to declare any counter variables, so I can declare the default values here. Guys, able to listen my voice? Yeah, hi Mohan. Yeah, like your voice is continuously breaking. Oh. Yeah, we are following you. So, anyways, no problem, right? I think uh, my voice is audible, right? But your screen is not moving as fast as you are typing. <laughs> okay, okay. Since actually I'm working your voice is clear, but your, your screen no Okay, okay because here I'm working in VMware. Okay, so bit slow So any notes in this panel variable panel No, right No doubts Okay, so we'll discuss about this arguments and imports. So when we'll discuss in the next chapter. So let uh, us discuss one by uh, one. What? I am Mohan. Yeah. Ramakrishna, right? Mohan, this is Ramakrishna. Yeah, please tell me Ramakrishna. Oh yes. How we select the generic type as a variable type? Yeah, that uh, that will we'll discuss now. Okay. Hello. That we'll discuss now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. First one. So generic, generic value variables. So big, uh, we have one um, generic type in Vapor Studio, so which can be stored any type of data, which may be a text, it may be numbers, it may be data and arrays, whatever it is. So generic values are uh, uh, generic values are basically automatically converted into their own types. Like if I'm declaring one generic type of integer right so automatically what will happen if you declare a 10 so if you assign the value to the 10 to that generic variable by default internally convert which will be acting like integer suppose if you're declaring a generic variable and you have been assigned some value with some string or some double i mean some precision values which is internally convert into a string or double or whatever it is so this is the one now uh, um which is providing by UI Pass Studio. So let us see demo on that. I'm just deleting the existing one. I'm just pushing one sequence. I'm just pulling one sequence. Okay. Here. I'm declaring one variable called gen. Hi Mohan, your screen is not moving. Now we able to see. And now it came. Okay, okay. Now 
when we type your generic right so generic value so I am declaring value here okay so so this is a how we have to declare a generic variable here I have assigned hello I want to display this value yesterday I have discussed about like displaying we have a three activities the one is a right line message box and log message so I'm trying to pull right line So before that, before that we have one more activity, universal activity called assign. So we are always using this for our assigning values, some a equals to 10 or b equals to 10. So I'm going to use this. So here gen value, gen value plus I'm going to I task now I am displaying gen see here gen value doesn't require to convert because since which will be considered as string here I am just running so we can see the output in the output panel so variable demo execution started and this is a default value hello and uh, the task i'm just appended on the fly and uh, variable name variable demo execution ended so this is how we have to declare the generic variable now we got ramakrishna Ramakrishna, you with me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on clear. Clear. Thank you. Now I am moving to the string. If I want to declare only string type of information, right? So then we can go to the string. A string variable is a type of variable that can store only string type of information. So normally, when we declare a string which can accommodate all for numeric value. So where we can store the names and the password related information. So when I'm declaring some value within the uh, string variable, so make sure that so we have to give or we have to enclose within the quotes. Let's see one small demo. I'm just going to create one more sequence with the string demo. I'm just clicking on so how to create a variable so by default select an activity to so set an variable scope so I'm selecting so when you're trying to create create a string so prefix with str name so string so I just you can create you can uh, you can give the default value or you can assign it on the fly so for assigning activity, so we have assigning. So str name equals to okay. So whatever the function string manipulation function we have, right? Yes, get substring. Okay, 
so what are the functions in the string so all the functions are available in the ui path as well so i want to get substring of the string name how i am going to get it i am going to display in the right line so right line dot substring of so starting index 0 comma 2 so what is the output for this can anyone guess i'm simply running ra yes so output is ra very good starting and from starting how many characters i want to print so 0th location i'm just printing to so whatever the stream manipulation function string dot trim okay substring so we have different types of uh, string dot join we have a lot of in so all the methods are going to support here since we have developer this one with our dot net framework so this is how the string the variable is going to be clear okay so next important uh, is a boolean so normally you know like a boolean is you know we are using uh, for validating whether this you know this condition is true or false okay where we are checking boolean type of variables so, so which return either true or false so actually the boolean variable which contain two possible values either of true or false so normally this is going to be used when we are designing or whenever we make any decision from the workflow so we are going to use a boolean variable okay now let's flip to the vapor studio and see one small demo on it so just create a sequence boolean demo so instead right instead let us create let us create a flow chart for better understandability i'm just deleting this yes create flow chart so boolean demo So when I created this, the first time I think we have already created flowchart, right? So when I create a flowchart, it is coming with one start point. So here I am going to. Before that, let us declare one boolean variable. So how to declare a boolean variable? So bool. Is valid. So this is type is boolean. So by default, give some value is true. Okay. So by default is created. Just delete it. Now, I just checking whether the bool. Okay, here spelling mistake. fine for validating for we have a decision activity so so when we drag and drop the decision which having two roots the one is the true path and the second is false path so go to the properties here the condition so we can write the condition here is yes. valid equals to and if it is a true here 
the flow chart is the collection of sequences with the decisions okay i'm just going to pull up one sequence this is true i'm going to one more sequence for handling false okay now just connect with this like this and connect to false fine and so still it is i'm just going inside i am displaying one right line in the double quotes valid and come back to the so this is called true sequence so always sequence prefix with the uh, suq so valid Let's do Q. Not valid. So go back inside. So we have done with the valid one. So go back to the not valid sequence. Just pull an activity called right line. I'm just going to display invalid. Done. I'm done with this flowchart. But still it is showing error. So make sure that my flow chart doesn't have any start node. So because there is no link between your start node to your uh, middle node. So make sure that, so this is my start node, set as start node. So this is how the flow chart will be looking like this. Fine, just run this application. Because I have given right, so by default they have been assigned with this bool is valid with true. So automatically, what will happen when we while checking this condition? So if it is condition is true, then the workflow which navigate to the the valid scenario. If just give the false here and check it and try to run it again. So let us see the workflow output is invalid so any doubts here okay so we're good to go and let us discuss with uh, one more variable integer so we here we used to call it as number variables so number variables also so known as integer here i have type of mistake so we also call it as an integer where we can store numeric type of information so this can be used to perform equations or comparisons when working with your process so let us see a small demo on this so let us create create a sequence int demo okay okay let's do a small demo with integer how to declare is integer let's do addition of two numbers okay with the in the UAPA studio how it is going to be so if we want to perform addition of two numbers so we need three variables the first variable is used to read the value of the first in number one so this is integer so default one i am not assigning i'm just going to create one more variable for storing second variable of type integer and i'm just going to create int result so addition of the sum of two numbers i want to store it into one more variable call result of type integer done okay 
so my declaration part is I mean my variable declaration is part done now I want to assign the value to the variable so we need activity call assign activity here so what is the number in number I just assigned 10 and I'm just going to pull out one more as an activity int number two I'm declaring value assigning value to that now let's do the sum of if we want to do sum also we need assign activity assign activity which is used to doing all the calculation for assigning or calculations so we can use it so in result here i'm going to sum off in number one plus in number two I'm done so i'm going to display the sum of two numbers in the right line so i'm just prefix with some value the sum of Plus, so I'm displaying so int result so which is throwing error so what is that so yesterday I told you so make sure that right line will accept only only string type information so what you will do just go to properties just start string anybody has any question somebody is trying to talk right no. right fine no, no. right so I'm just going to run this application and let us see the output of this so there we go the sum of two numbers is 30 so if I want to read the information from the user, so what is the activity? If I want to read the values from the user, okay. So we have input dialog activity. Okay here addition enter number So, so whatever I'm reading from the right, this one, so make sure that we have an output variable. So whatever the result content that I want to store it into one variable. So what is that? Int number one. So same thing, just, just disable this activity. I'm just going to put one more. So input dialog. Title is uh, addition. The label is enter second value. So the resultant content, whatever you're reading from the user, make sure that I want to store it into somewhere. For that, we require a variable. The variable is integer number two and just disable this activity 
now save this I'm trying to run so enter number one I'm sorry spelling mistake just click it and I'm number two so there we go the sum of two numbers from the user Yes, any words so far? No, 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 no. Okay. So, so far we have discussed, uh, see, we have discussed Boolean variable, we have this how to create generic variable, how to create integer, and how to create string variables. So, these are all the important uh, topic when we're discussing about variable data types so tomorrow we will discuss data table and date time variable so shall we meet or no, tomorrow 9 30 okay morning yeah sure. yeah 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 okay. any doubts so far please uh, no i'll give five five minutes time for you so do you have any doubts let's discuss over there Uh, like can you tell me how to install UiPath? Yes, like we have created we have created a VMware and we have installed Windows 7 also Okay, can you please share your screen so that I can tell you how to install that Like, like make me presenter so that you can access my screen Okay You are Manoj, right? Yes Yes, I have given you. Please share your screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yep. So, can you take give me mouse access so that you can access? Ashok, you with me? Ashok. Hey, Ashok. So, you able to follow me, right, Ashok? You have any questions? I have followed. I know. Okay, good. Anybody has any questions? Yeah. It was struck like. It was struck my laptop. Okay, okay, let it be low, no issues. It is not, my mouse is unable to. You you press, you uh, know, Control Alt. Uh, Manoj, can you restart the VM? Yeah, but, okay, now it is clear. Close it and restart. Yes, yes.
same again we're stuck okay let it be no issue so you just uh, press uh, control alt so that you can see the mouse pointer yeah i think okay. in the first like it's going to take some time wait for two uh, two seconds yeah now it is loaded yeah yeah Did you download it? No, no. You don't know. No, no. It will be downloaded. So, can I click on start trial version? Yeah, it's better. No, don't. Don't download it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will. I will do it. I have forgotten password. <laughs> okay. 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 Tomorrow I will download and I will ready by tomorrow nine thirty. Okay. So that is that is better. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I don't okay. want to waste other one other. Thing. Okay. Fine, sir. So and last okay. question. Any have any? Do you have any questions or else we can uh, wind up our session today? Uh, I have a small query. Before you come, please tell me your name. <laughs> yes. uh, myself, Jerome. Hey, Jerome. Hey, tell me, yeah. 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 Uh, instead of inline, uh, we can use the message box, no, for displaying our output. Yes, yes. We can <coughs> use message box. We can use log message. See, when I'm trying to display, no, we have three what is different? Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. I'll, I'm just going to show you that example. Okay, so coming to the same program, I mean, same example, instead, instead of this one, okay, let it be uh, right line as well. Go into full box, so message box. I'm okay. just, yeah, I'm just drag and drop here. So, same thing, sum of two numbers. Plus int result dot to string. Make sure that we have to convert it to string, which is allow message box also will allow so only string. So okay, I run this. Here I'm just 
which, which is asking the first number, second okay. number, okay. and see. This is how message box will work. So message box will just yes. push it to the user, okay? So when I was using okay. write or log message, so which is going to display in the output panel. Okay. So when I use the box, I'm just stopping the process. See, next consecutive stopping, I'm, I'm just stopping here. See, still my UA path robot is running, but I'm strong, I'm just holding. I'm just, I'm just put on hold a robot until okay. the user intervention is required. And I click OK, my robot is executed my process. See, here this is the data, okay. this is the message which is coming from right line, and whatever you're displaying message box that we cannot display here because that is going to push it to the user. It is like okay. a pop up. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Fine. Anybody has any questions? I hope so. No one has a no question. No one has, no one has any questions. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, connect tomorrow morning at sharply 9:30. So we'll discuss. Um, so tomorrow is very very important topic. So we'll we have to discuss data table and date time. Then we'll push on arguments. So very very important topic. This is arguments. So that. Uh, and we'll, I'll try to finish imports as well tomorrow. Okay. So until then, okay. bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Okay.